<laughs> and since it's a true crime video, that means that I have my stem slug, right? I have Brian. I've got Brian. I've got Brian in this, uh, I, I found him a little, I had this furry bag, and I was like, I don't know what to put in it, so I was like, oh, it's like a little snail, a little slug hideout. Dahmer. Not Jeffrey Dahmer, but Jeffrey. Because of Jeffrey Dahmer. So now we have Jeffrey and Brian. Look how happy they are. on a leap day. Okay. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of cuts in this video because like my throat, I have a weird throat thing going on and I constantly have to clear it out. So I apologize. So she killed this dude, John Charles Thomas Price. Not only did she kill him, um, like in a, she, she stabbed him to death, which is brutal. Like stabbed him like fucking 30 times. She also skinned him and put it, the skin on meat hooks. And so it was like 
displayed for the police officers when they came. She also cooked some of his body parts, including his head, because she did decapitate him. And posed the body, like, we'll get into it, bro, she is insane. She's insane.
in school, Catherine is remembered being a bully, especially to smaller children. She once assaulted a boy with a, um, a weapon. I think it was a knife or something that she brought home or brought from the, um, home. And then she also injured a teacher. Um, and the teacher, like, it was a self-defense thing. So she was so good at it that she was quickly promoted to boning and was given <laughs> to boning uh, and was given her own set of butcher's knives that she took everywhere. Like she fucking loved these things. Um, she took them home and hung them above her bed like so that, what is it said? Um, so that they quote always be handy if I needed them. I can't do an Australian accent or I would, but like... So, the habit of keeping her knives above her bed was something that she continued in every house that she lived in until she was incarcerated. saying that he has 
much with this one or she'll fucking kill you stir her up the wrong way or do the wrong thing and you're fucked don't ever think of playing up on her she'll fucking kill you playing up on means to cheat or like yeah to cheat so like i guess the custom for them was to get super fucking drunk before their wedding night and so that's what they did they spent like three days just drinking and then had their wedding and so on their honeymoon Catherine, it's just so white trash like the whole story just reminds me of just white trash um Catherine's mother and father she said had had sex like five times on their honeymoon right Kellett being just his after three times, it looked like this, and and just he couldn't, you know, because of whiskey. And yeah, anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. So they only did it three times. She got so upset that they only fucked three times on their wedding night that he, like, when he passed out, she choked him on their honeymoon. Literally started choking him. You could say their marriage was very violent from the get-go. Um, one time, Kelly, I like, I think, liked to play darts. Was it darts? Yeah, he liked to play darts, and so he would go to competitions and stuff, and she didn't mind that, as long as he didn't come home late. Well, while she was pregnant, he came home late, and, um, he came home late because he was, like, winning in the dark competition. And she had burned all of his clothes. And his shoes. I just, I, I looked at him. Yeah, his clothes and his shoes. And hit him over the head with a frying pan. He had a fractured skull. Severely fractured. Whenever he went to a neighbor's house, they begged him to call the police. Police wanted to charge Catherine, but Catherine talked to Kellett into dropping the charges. It is now May 1976. Uh, Kellett leaves. He gets the fuck out of there and leaves Catherine for another woman. psychiatric facility and she's she's fucking insane so uh don't worry melissa lived an old uh homeless man named old ted good old ted uh was foraging around the railway line and he saved melissa by all of the witness accounts which i guess would be like why wouldn't i don't it anyways uh by all accounts minutes before the train passed so melissa was almost a bye-bye like almost a goodbye so she was arrested and taken to the same hospital st elmo's and just 
signed her way out the next day. She was like, no, no, I don't want to be here anymore. I just tried to kill people and almost killed my daughter, but I don't want to be here anymore. Like, just leaves, deuces. demanding her to drive to Queensland and find Kelly. Uh, they ended up stopping at a gas station where the woman escapes, but by the time police arrived, she had taken hostage of a young boy and was threatening him with the knife. his mother too. So somehow Kellett hears of the incident and um goes back. He literally he leaves his girlfriend and moves back with his mother to support Catherine. Okay, the baby stopped crying, I think. So hears the incident, leaves his girlfriend, and moves back with his mother. She's released August 9th, 1976, um, into the care of her mother-in-law and Kelly. They all move to Ipswich, um, where she obtains a job at the Denmore Meatworks. Denmore Meatworks. This is proof of what would happen if I catch you cheating on me. She also knocks him out with a frying pan. Just loves the frying pans, this one. So, after um, the frying pan, she also hits him in the face with an iron. Um, before stabbing him in the chest with a pair of scissors. He quickly moves back to Scone. He, um, went back to try to see if he can get his clothes and found that she had cut them all up. He then goes into hiding. Um, but he 
like they had a kid together uh, I didn't include that but yeah they had a kid together and so he like tries to go back to go see his daughter and uh, he discovers that Catherine had gone to the police and falsely accused him of mistreatment and filed a apprehended violence order against him basically like a protection like a uh, restraining order restraining order actually knew about Catherine's like tendencies for violence and uh, he still let her move into his house in 1995. His children really liked her and he was making a lot of money in the local mines. So um, he said that apart from all of the um, arguments, his first quote, a bunch of roses. Like, Catherine must have had good, good, you know what I mean? Like, she probably knew how to handle the meat and not even just at the job. Like, she knew how to handle meat, apparently. Like, that's the only reason I could see staying with someone like Catherine is if she had the good meat, you know, like, the good techniques. The good meat techniques. <laughs> than before, um, and Price's friends refused to have anything to do with him while he was dating her. So, uh, what is this, 98? Yeah, probably 98, 99. Uh, in February, we reached the fated day, February 2000. Um, arguments, multiple assaults, and finally Catherine stabs him in the chest, and, and he kicks her out, he kicks, Price kicks Catherine out. Well, on the 29th, uh, he takes out a restraining order, or attempts to, um, to keep Catherine away from his kids and himself. That very afternoon, on February 29th, he tells his 
You know, classy, classy, classy. She was also going to create a video of her topless sitting in a chair, uh, letting her grandchildren play with her titties while she sang them songs um, and read stories to them, like her children and grandchildren. Um, sort of like a lost will. I guess you could say that. That's one way it's been put. Um, she then also returns videos to her sister because the Knight family were pirates. Arr. <laughs> they loved to, um, they had a very vast collection of DVDs and videos and stuff. Like, I think it was probably videos at this time in the 90s, to early 2000s, early, early 2000s, yeah. Probably videos. And, um, they had a huge collection of pirated movies that they would just swap between each other. Um, and if you're wondering, Catherine really liked horror movies. Um, she liked this one that was about, what was it, like, the possession or something, like, kind of B-rated horror movie. I had never seen it or heard of it, actually. Um, ow. I have a pimple right there, and it's, I'm, like, breaking out recently. While she was returning the video, her sister jokingly said, uh, or asked if Catherine was planning on killing Bryce. <laughs> so funny. Um, so Catherine finally, after running her errands, going to Goodwill, buying that good lingerie, getting, you know, all, you know, fondled by her grandchildren and then returning a video. Um, she goes to Bryce's house and she uh, watches some TV, you know, probably smokes a few cigarettes. She ends up getting in the shower. She puts on that real good, good, goodwill, uh, good, good, goodwill lingerie and uh, wakes Bryce up with some, some sleepy, sleepy sex uh, before he goes back to sleep. This is when Catherine literally kills him, like, not even in, like, okay, so, they don't know what exactly happened because Catherine doesn't talk about it, um, but this is based on the blood evidence. They assume that Catherine started stabbing, um, Bryce with his, with the knife while she's sleeping. He then awakes and tries to turn on the light before attempting to escape the house. As Catherine is stabbing him in the back, like he's trying to escape the hallway, there's blood everywhere. So she's stabbing him in the back. He actually does manage to get the door open, but um, he stumbles back or either is dragged inside. Um, he uh, is dragged into the hallway and is left there. 
because Catherine has a an errand to do while she is uh I, she goes and withdraws a thousand dollars from his bank account, and this money is never seen again. They don't know who, what. I mean, like, who's gonna be like, oh yeah, here you go, cops, a thousand dollars that Catherine gave me. No, that money is gone. Night skins him completely, and when I mean completely, I mean face down. Like, the only thing that's left on the body is like a little bit of hair on his scalp that she couldn't get off. So, she skins him, hangs the skin, face included, onto these meat hooks in the hallway. Um, like, like it's a fucking curtain, bro. Like it's like announcing that you're in the next room. Like she then decapitates him and cooks part of his body with potatoes, pumpkins, beetroot, zucchini, cabbage, yellow squash, and gravy, which kind of sounds good if the human head wasn't included. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, no human head. Like, um, so she actually puts it in two servings, like two place settings, and um, puts um, little place cards on there with the name of Price's kids on the place cards. There was actually, after the police were like gathering evidence, they found another meal that was thrown out. Um, it was speculated. She had no memory of the crime, none at all. Um, Price's head, like I said, he was decapitated. The head was found in a pot with um, vegetables. And the pot was still warm, indicating that the cooking took place earlier that day. So she then arranged his body, the skinless corpse, the skinless head headless corpse of this man. Um, she put it in his favorite chair, um, with the arms draped over a one and a half liter soda bottle, with his legs crossed. This was claimed in court to be an act of defilement, demonstrating Knight's contempt for Bryce, which is putting it fucking lightly, if you ask me. What do you think, Jeffrey? Yeah, he agrees too. So, the autopsy revealed that Price had been stabbed at least 37 times. Many of these extended to the vital organs, meaning she was <gasps> thrusting into this man. So you may wonder how this was discovered, and, um, oh god, so, he had a neighbor who, when he went to work, realized that there was, Price's car was still in the car, like, in the carport, and his car was still in the car, his, his car was still in the carport, and Price always left before this man, like, there was a schedule, and Price stick to it, and this man knew the schedule because, like, they had been neighbors for so long, and so he knew something was up, and he also knew, like, what had been said at work, and, like, so he goes, and what did he say? He knocks on the door, and whenever he notices blood, the police were called. So, 
the police found Price's body in Knight's comatose. Um, she was comatose on the floor. She had taken a bunch of pills. So while they were, you know, there's a lot of blood everywhere, which is one awful, like, you know, that's, well, that's really terrible. But then the officers are going through and like, move this curtain out of the way and see Price's body, see that it's skinless, realize what he just, like, he turns around and you, and he, and the officer said that all he remembers is Price's hollow face sitting there, like, like he, I would never be the same again, I would never be the same again. not guilty and even rejects a plea offer to manslaughter um she changes her plea to guilty after the judge after the jury not the judge i'm sorry the jury was you know um put together and paneled um, so the jury was dismissed there's no given reason as to why Catherine changed her plea. Um, and even after accepting it, she still doesn't take responsibility for it, like for her actions. So her lawyers tried to submit that Catherine shouldn't have to listen to the details of her crime. Um, for some reason, and the judge denied this. Um, so when Catherine was listening to what had happened and they were discussing the skinning and decapitation, Catherine actually started becoming hysterical and was sedated. So she was actually sentenced on November 8th. Um, the judge pointed out the nature of the crime and the fact that Catherine had no remorse and was sentenced to life imprisonment and her papers marked never to be released which is the first time as i said in australian history um that this has been imposed by a you know to a woman imposed to a woman she tries to appeal a life sentence. Um, she had stated that the, you know, like, like, life sentence without the possibility of parole was too severe um, for this killing. Three different judges, <laughs> three, um, dismissed the appeal, stating, quote, this was an appalling crime almost beyond contemplation in a civilized society. Bro, you tried to, you not even tried, you succeeded in skinning your boyfriend from head to toe and you think that you deserve a possibility of getting out? I don't fucking think so. You also tried to eat, like, it's not even the fact that she skinned it, she also decapitated it. She then tried to eat it and then serve it to her kid. Like, there was this, she also, like, had this weird rape attempt like there was a note by his body that said like trying to blame it on the fact that he raped her daughter or something it's very strange she's psycho she's a psycho you don't like to say that but she's a psycho she's a maniac maniac <laughs> so that was Catherine Knight she's still in prison she's still fucking bonkers um yeah, bro, I'm amazed. One woman, and she was a big woman. She was a big woman. Um, you know, we all love big mommy dommies, but what if your mommy dommy wanted to skin you a lot? I guess technically Lady Dim Dimitrescu, Dimescu, whatever you want. Lady D technically wants to skin you alive, but like, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed meeting Jeffrey. <laughs> he really enjoyed
enjoyed meeting you.